Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, this is Dmitry and we are having yet another stream of Network Programmability. Um, I'm really excited to stream as always. Unfortunately, today we are streaming not uh, at the usual schedule. Usual schedule is Sunday, today is Saturday. Uh, I will tell you in a moment why. Um, so the focus of today is going to be Python type checking. Uh, so as if you have programmed in Python before, you probably know that Python has dynamic typing, so it doesn't enforce uh, it doesn't enforce any kind of types. However, there is this new new feature uh, which is optional type checking. So you can actually introduce types into the language, and then based on those declared types, you can provide some additional um, guarantees that your program is correct. Uh, so before we will actually dig into the topic, um, as usual, a couple of announcements uh, slash vlog part. So uh, first of all, uh, the the uh, the winner of the contest that was um, around one month ago um, received his SDA book that I sent. Uh, his name is Ioannis uh, from Greece. That's that's awesome. I'm I'm glad glad to hear that he received the book. Um, so I hope you will have some other context uh, contest sorry in the future. Um, so make sure you participate if you'd like to win something. Um, okay, another thing is that f news from this week is that Guido, the creator of Python language, stepped down from he from his. Uh, so-called BDFL role. So BDFL stands for Benevolent Dictator for Life. Um, and the reason why he has this nickname is that every so often he he was making some decisions, uh, some decisions uh, for the language single-handedly. So without without like voting or anything. So basically, if Guido says that we will we are going to have this in the language this is going to happen uh, so um, so even though there is a bunch of core developers and there is a summit and so on uh, every so often there are some decisions like this where where um, you know whatever he says is going to happen so the probably the uh, latest thing and very controversial which caused a lot of backlash was um, PEP 572, which is assignment expressions. I already talked about them last time. So very controversial, not so many people agree with this decision, but uh, well, fortunately or unfortunately, Guido decided that this is going to happen. And this week he announced that he is no longer going to be in that role. So he's basically moving away from the making decisions on the Python language. I do not know yet if it's a good or bad thing, but um, I hope it's good as long as we will have actual committee deciding uh, what the language will look like um, instead of a single person. I think it's a good, but a good thing, but we'll see. Another one is that um, Python packaging is still paying. So for um, for last couple of weeks at work, I was doing a lot of Python packaging basically creating, excuse me, uh, the library, Python library. And I, I, I can't even tell you how much pain I endured during this time. Um, so almost at every single point I had some problems. For example, one of the latest problems were, okay, like I packaged my application, but then then I don't see subdirectories when I install it somewhere else of the package. Then another problem was I included the I included the images in my library, and then again when I when I was uh, installing it in some other place, th those were not there, and every one of those problems were uh, hours and hours of googling and trying things out extremely painful. I, I do hope that at some point we we'll as a community will solve this, but I'm not that optimistic. 
And the last thing, uh, the last announcement for today is that there is n uh, there will be no stream next week. Uh, so I'm going on vacation tomorrow. So um, for two weeks. Uh, so that's actually the reason why we don't have a stream tomorrow because I will be out. Uh, and we will not have a stream next week, but in two weeks on Sunday, we are going to continue our streams. I do not know yet the topic. So I do have a couple of goals for my vacation. One of them is finish the exercises for the books that I'm translating from Russian to English. So I'm pretty sure I will uh, get it done. Uh, another one is um, my goal. Another goal is two blog posts during that time. So one of them is um, about uh, getting starting with getting started with Python, uh, and the second one I haven't decided yet. Um, I haven't decided yet. There are so many topics that I would like to cover, but we'll see which one I actually would like to write about. And the last goal would be to contribute to the Nornier project, which uh, is. Um, which is I'm planning to uh, use instead of Ansible for my project at work at some point. So I do believe there I could do some useful contribution there. So this is what I'm going to do next week. And let me also then uh, go through the chat real quick if there is some, some stuff that needs my attention. Uh, okay. There are no, no questions or comments. Uh, you can also, uh, so I will be monitoring every so often the Twitch chat as well as Slack. So I told you last time that I'm going to remove my Discord channel and I deleted it this week. So I am now mostly on network to code Slack. Uh, in particular, I'm paying the most attention to Nornir channel or Python channel, so you can find me there. Uh, so I will be monitoring both Twitch uh, chat and Slack chat. Uh, okay, so uh, let's actually um, do some useful stuff. <laughs> so um, as I told you before, uh, the focus of today is going to be type checking in Python. Um, and we are going to do it for for Nornir that I just mentioned. So Nornir, we had a couple of streams before. Uh, one, we had a stream about Nornir. This is a Python uh, automation framework where you can interact with network devices using threads and, and so on and so forth. So if you are interested to hear more about Nornir itself, go back and watch the stream from two weeks ago or do some hands-on yourself. I think their API is pretty. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, so today we are going to introduce types into this project. Um, so we had some discussion with their uh, with their author, with David Barroso, uh, and um, it seems we it seems we agreed that it's a good thing to migrate to types to to uh, improve the code quality, as well as uh, uh, moving to completely Python three six plus. Um, so yeah, this is what we are going to do today. Uh, so let me tell you first about my experience with MyPy. So if you asked me three months ago about MyPy, I would say, I would reply that I heard about it, but I have no idea why would I want to use this. And like, uh, I was in this camp, like, Oh, but Python is dynamic, dynamically typed language. We don't need types. Uh, like that's the main benefit of the language. So why, why do you, why are you forcing me to use types? Uh, and then I was at PyCon, where I, um, where during the sprints and sprints is a couple of days after the conference where you can join any kind of open source project and work with people to, you know, on some issues and contribute to open source. So during the sprint, I was, um, uh, I, wa I joined the third bot team. So by the way, if you haven't heard about third bot, shame on you. Uh, so third bot 
It's basically an application where you can get, uh, which helps you getting the HTTPS certificates from Let's Encrypt. So the, the project is written in Python um, and it's open source. You can find it on GitHub. So um, I, was, I was basically working with those guys on the same thing. So basically one of the issues that was opened and was uh, marked as good for, for a, a good first issue was about MyPy. So uh, by the way, it's very interesting that third bot is actually Python 3 Python 2.3 compatible uh, compatible code. Uh, so um, yeah, I do not know a lot of open source projects doing that, but they actually do do that. And um, basically they wanted to migrate to static types and to use MyPy um, to improve the code quality. That's the basic, the, the main reason. So I already mentioned about uh, static typing a little and about MyPy, but I haven't really explained what is MyPy. So uh, so with static types, well, if you are a programmer, you have some kind of programming experience, uh, you probably know what it means. So for example, in, uh, and I, I don't do a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, C right now, so I may I may confuse some syntax, but in C, for any kind of function or variable, you have to define type. So you would say int i is equal to zero, or for functions you uh, would do what? And I, Jesus Christ, I really forgot the syntax. Is it? No, it's not st static. I I feel I feel embarrassed now. Uh, so like public void main int something like this check basically you have to specify types for your variables and you have to specify types for your function arguments and return type so something like this I guess uh, but Again, I could be wrong because I haven't programmed in C for months now. Uh, maybe this. You know what? Not not to completely be embarrassed, I will just Google this. Uh, <laughs> function definition in C. So I. Uh, return time function name parameter. Oh, I actually got it right. So yeah, something like this. So you have to specify types, okay? In Python though, in contracts, you don't say int i equal to zero, you say i is equal to zero without semicolon. You say def main. So you don't specify the return arguments of the function as well as parameters. Uh, so you could do this, or you could say def get uh, max num, uh, and then you have numbers, which is supposed to be a list of something, but you don't know uh, you don't know what. So in in C, you would have to specify the types, the type of the of the parameter. So Python is dynamically typed language, and in contrast, C or Java, they are they are statically typed languages. Um, so with uh, new additions into language in both Python 2 and 3, you can actually have types in Python now. So uh, depending on the use case, for example, uh, for, in, uh, for i is equal to zero, you don't need to specify type because it can be inferred based on this argument. For the function uh, get uh, get max number, which is getting the, let me do this, uh, getting maximum number from the list, right? And then let's say it's doing just max from numbers. Something like this. Uh, Python. Um, so you can introduce types 
where you could say something like this. You could say a list of uh, integers and then your return type is going to be integer. So this is what you can do in um, uh, in um, Python 3. So this syntax is valid uh, uh, since um, Python 3.5. Yeah, I think it's Python 3.5, but there is another th syntax that is available. So, okay. Uh, yeah, let, let me repeat it again. So this syntax, I think, is available since Python 3.5. Now, there is alternative uh, syntax which is available from earlier which is this uh, type uh, list of integers I think it's like this I could be wrong so the is a comment based syntax using this you can specify types for Python 2 okay so th those are two, two possible syntaxes. Now in Python 3.6, there was new additional features. Well, for simple arguments like integers and you specify something like this, it can, you can easily refer, uh, infer the type that is integer. But when you have something like this, um, items, and it's empty list, okay? And then you put uh, items in the list, um, using this function, yeah, yes. So let's say append uh, add, add item, item, items. And you say something like this. You no longer know what what the type of this, uh, this variable is uh, because it's just empty list. So you have no clue what are the items there. So in Python 3.6, there is what is called a variable annotation, which is specified by semicolon after the variable, very in similar fashion, where you say list of integer, something like this. An alternative to older versions of Python would be uh, this. Okay. So this particular syntax is available uh, since Python 3.6. Uh, this particular syntax is available in Python 3.5, maybe even earlier, but I don't remember. Okay. Uh, let me see if there are some questions or comments. Okay. Nothing so far. Okay. Good. Now, so this is what, what is syntax wise. Now we have this thing called uh, so, okay, hold on. This one is called variable annotation. This one is called uh, This one is called function annotation now By introducing this you don't make Python statically typed language just FYI Okay, you still will have dynamic types. They are not checked in runtime and so on and so forth. However by doing this and using third-party tools, um, you can actually check your code for correctness. Okay? So, what are these third-party tools? Well, there are a couple. The most popular one is called MyPy. So, those tools, all of them are called static type analyzers uh, or static type checkers. So, MyPy is the most popular one. It was developed by Dropbox team where Guido is right now. Uh, and basically what this tool does, you run this, it goes through all of your code and checks if your code is correct. Um, obviously you will not catch every single bug, but you will catch a bunch of, uh, a bunch of bugs actually. So there are alternative tools to MyPy. Uh, so MyPy is uh, this one, this is what we are going to cover today. Uh, the alternative tools, at least uh, that I know of, is called Pyre, uh, and it was this, uh, developed by Facebook, PyreCheck, this one. But I haven't tried it, they claim that it's much faster than, than MyPy. For my code base it doesn't really matter. 
Um, so, okay, so we have either MyPy or Pyre. Okay, so then let's go to, back to the question, why would you want to have types in the first place? Well, first of all, you can catch a lot of bugs much earlier. You can catch bugs before you even run the program. Okay. Second one is it improves code readability. So I, when I was working on the third bot project here, I was looking at the code, but, and there was some variable, but I had no clue what that variable is, you know, what kind of type it has. Um, and sometimes it was extremely complex to understand the code that I have never seen before in my life. So types really help you to understand code better. Uh, this is the second point. Uh, well, um, the, th the third point is that you can use the these types to build your documentation. Obviously, just again, just to clarify, by having types, you still have to write your docs. You still have to write your, write your doc strings. However, you can remove uh, the types from the doc string now because every so often they get outdated. Nobody cares about fixing them in doc strings. There is no single uh, syntax defined for the doc string. Um, how to specify types in doc strings. So there are some variations, but there is no standard. These types uh, specified directly into your language. You can actually, uh, well, it's it's a standard base. So there is a path for it. So there is actually now a standard. And by integrating some kind of static an uh, analyzer like MyPy into your CI CD, uh, you can actually guarantee that whenever you do commit uh, your types are correct and if they are outdated then you your um, your uh, commit will actually not pass the testing stage um, in compared to doc strings where you can't really enforce this okay so the, as far as I know there there is no type checker that can work on types in the doc string so the the best workflow is to have uh, to introduce it into your code base and add it to your CI CD so that whenever you do commit to, to git you will run your tests you will run your flake 8 or pylint for the for the uh, for linting for checking your syntax uh, and you will also run static type checker so and if it finds some error you have to go ahead and fix it so these three main points, let me uh, reiterate again. First, you can catch bugs much earlier. Second, it improves code readability. Third, um, third you can, you can um, well, your uh, types are actually, um, your types are actually source of truth. It, it will not really happen that uh, they are outdated because if they are outdated, you will not pass the MyPy tests uh, compared to having types in the doc string. Okay, uh, I think I think there was some question. Let me quickly check. Can you make an error example that MyPy can ca catch? Uh, yes, a little bit later once we start uh, we start playing around with this. Um, so right now I would like to finish uh, uh, finish talking about my experience with MyPy. So as I told you, like three months ago, I was like completely ignorant of types. Then at MyPy, I, I got involved into third bot and was helping them introduce MyPy in their code base. Um, and after I did that, I really realized why I want to do that. Uh, we, we actually caught a around dozen bucks in uh, in third bot just by having types um, and we introduced it so I was responsible for like phase one uh, for uh, for the first stage so basically in, in the MyPy you have a bunch of flags and what you usually do when you are migrating large code base and third bot is medium code base I think they have like 30,000 lines of Python code or 35k 
So the way you introduce it into your code base, you introduce it with very, um, with very simple checks. Not it, like not that it should uh, fix er uh, catch everything, but some. And you also specify like your scope, like you all only want to enforce my pie on, on your sub sub module, for example. Let's say on like here it would be like on uh, third bot Apache, for example. So you do this, you put it in your config files that you only want to do it for third bot Apache with some flags, uh, with some flags that are not, um, not extremely strict. You run MyPy, you fix all of the errors, you add this to your CI CD, then you add more flags gradually. So you add mo more stri a stricter flag, then you fix your errors again um, and uh, commit and so on. Then you move away, move to another um, sub module and so on and so forth. So this is an approach that we were using. Um, just before the third bot, there was another company or product called Zulip, which is open source chat, kind of Slack-like. Actually, it's pretty cool. Uh, I saw it, but uh, they are open source and they actually wrote a document. How would you introduce uh, MyPy to large code base? So after after PyCon, I realized why why it's cool. I got convinced. And after this, for every single project, I'm using it right now. Uh, even if I'm the only one contributor there. Um, so, uh, and it really helped. So for example, uh, yesterday I finished one of my internal applications, around 2000 lines of Python code, uh, where, you know, I had types everywhere. Uh, and, and actually the, app itself is doing a lot of expensive calls, like a lot of slow API calls internally and so on. And just by having types, I was able to catch so many bugs uh, before I even ran the program. So uh, yeah, I'm now really convinced I'm using it everywhere, uh, even in my, you know, for like presentations and so on, I also tend to include types there as well. Uh, okay, so this is my my personal experience with static times. Uh, I do encourage you to try if you haven't tried them. Um, if you are if you are aiming towards code quality, um, then this is definitely something that you check out. Um, okay, cool. So there was a question: uh, Can you make an error example that my pie can catch? Sure. So let's do this. Uh, so let me go to some different directory. Okay. Let's do an example. Okay, so uh, let me think. Um, okay, so very simple example. So you have IP addresses, which is a list, okay? Then you have a function that says uh, Jesus Christ, it's so hard to come with see artificial examples. Let's have this IP address, add IP address. And you will say IP address and hosts, okay? And what this is going to do, it will say, let me double check the syntax. There is this module um, import IP address. 
address I forgot the syntax. Uh, IP address Python three. Oh, <laughs> IP underscore address. Okay, so it will be IP address. Uh, IP underscore address one two three four, and then I will have an example. Where I have incorrect one. Okay, and it uh, throws a value error. Okay, so let's do this from IP address, import IP address. Um, <laughs> okay, and we will say try Well, we can actually let it crash. So we'll say uh, hosts uh, add append append uh, IP address from IP address. Okay, this is a correct correct program. So Python. Let me save this. Uh, IP address something very simple okay and then we'll have our main function where you say uh, at IP address one two three four IP addresses hosts hosts <clears throat> And then you do this. And you also do, uh, let me see if they can deal with integers as well. Oh, actually they can deal with integers. Then it's a bad example. Okay, you, can, you can't pass floats, okay. So we'll try doing this. Uh, so, okay. Uh, okay, this looks good, kind of good to me. So we are going to crash on this line and on this line. So let me uh, let me comment that out. Uh, so Python IP address dot py. Okay, so this this is supposed to work. Let me also add print hosts. Okay. Ah, Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, yeah. It would be also great to call the function. again okay so we see this works fine now this one obviously crashes on second and third line okay good so let's start introducing types and also I'm going to make another mistake so now let me change the, the list to, to set okay and this is going to crash even on the first line as well Okay, it says your uh, the set doesn't have a pent. Okay, and I'm calling here a pent, which is obviously not valid. Okay, so now let me uncomment all of this, and I will show you which bugs bugs you can catch and which you will not be able to catch with my pack. Okay, so let's start doing the uh, the types. Okay, so. Um, the hosts is supposed to be a list of IP address object. 
uh, and we have to we have to import IPv4 address by the way. So we are going to have a list of IPv4 address objects. And you already see that you know this is kind of like not valid because I specified its type of list, but this is a set. So there is definitely something wrong. Okay, so IP address. We can say that it's always it's supposed to be a string. And host is supposed to be a list of IPv4 addresses. Okay. And this function will return nothing, so it will return none. So we also need def main none. And I guess I will need also a config file for my pi. I don't remember the defaults. Well, we can actually check what the defaults will be, but. So let me see. Okay, so we have types here, we have types here, we have types here. This looks good. Okay, so now we will call mypy. And I suppose we will uh, at least we will at least find this problem here. You'll find a problem. Uh, we will also find a problem here as well, where we have a float. And also, if I put an integer, you will find a problem here. So th this line of code is actually a valid line of code because the IPv4 address object supports integers. But in our program, we kind of like say, no, no, no. This function is uh, can only uh, accept string. So my pi will find this problem. My pi will find this problem. My pi will not find this problem because a string. Well, it is a string, so we can't we can't really enforce uh, enforce it here. Uh, this fine is fine. This this is also going to be a problem. Okay, so let's run this. We say my pi uh, my pi ip address dot py. need type annotation for hosts and let me also check which version of my pi i'm using need type annotation for hosts I guess I actually have to provide my usual config file. So um, bear with me for a second. I will get my usual config file um, for my pipe that I use for my projects. So this is my usual config file that I use. Let's see if it will change anything. Yeah, okay. No, this actually doesn't make any sense. Uh, call to untyped function. And somehow I managed to, to mess it up. Let's also move with this here. Need type annotation for hosts. Oh, right. I'm an idiot. Of course, the list, this object is not present right now in the current context. So obviously this doesn't make any sense. So. For that, you use the typing module and you say from typing import list. Uh, and you run this again. 
Okay, let's let's look on the servers. Um, okay. First, incompatible types in assignment on line 11. So here it says expression has type set of nothing, but what uh, what you uh, what uh, types that you specified is list. So this is wrong. Okay. Now look on line 14. It also says you are using a argument float, but you expect the str. Okay. Another one, argument one to add IP address has incompatible type int expected str. Okay. So we were able to catch that there is a bug here and there is a bug here. Okay. So now if I do this, if I say, uh, sorry, empty list. Now this and this um, will be fine. We'll still have two problems here. Yeah, so it, it complains about this. So I can, well, this is, the float one is obviously incorrect, but the add IP address actually can accept integer. Uh, it, it really depends on your function, right? So this underlying function IPv4 address actually accept integer. So technically we can actually say, oh, this is a valid code. So the way you would, you would do this, you would say union. And then here for the argument, you would say uh, union of strings and integers. Okay. And now this code will actually pass uh, all the checks all my pie checks it's still incorrect code because this line will crash but we can't really catch this bug by by static typing okay okay now let's for example let me actually say i actually would like to have sets okay and i will specify set so you know at some point in time i change my mind and i want to have actual sets Okay, so I specified here set, set. I need to import set as well. So this accepts set, this is set. Everything seems good, right? I rerun my pie again. And then it says on line seven, uh, your set has no attribute append. So it looks on this line and says, well, Sets actually do not have attri attribute append, they have attribute n add. So this is a problem, right? So we didn't even run our code yet. We, we run only type checker and it says there is a problem on this line. So now I change this append to add. I run my pi and it's fine. Uh, actually, it's not fine. Why it's not fine? Oh, because I didn't save the file. That's why. Okay, so now my pie is actually fine. Uh, if I if I comment this line of code because we already know it throws an error, uh, I do my pie again. It works. If I say Python three uh, IP address, uh, it actually runs just fine. So this was a very brief intro to my pie, where we were able to catch some bugs in our program before you we even run it. Let me go if there are some questions. This will definitely be helpful. I was, I was trying to parse Napalm CLI result and it will take me a while to figure out what data type he returns. Yeah, so having types in your program will really improves readability and, re, and code reuse. Plus, if you use something like PyCharm, for example, it will it it know it has its own parser. PyCharm doesn't use MyPy; it uses its own parser. So, but it also catches a lot of a lot of problems where it will be able to highlight like this kind of problems that we had here. It will actually highlight them during uh, you writing the code. It will say, no, 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 you are passing here the set, so it doesn't have. Uh, attribute add, uh, attribute append. Okay, so uh, it will catch this even during the writing code, which is awesome. Uh, there is another very important piece is that third party modules, and this is kind of pain. 
Uh, so the most benefit you get from static type checks if you have types everywhere. Uh, so this also implies types for third party modules and for standard library and so on and so forth. So what is done there? Uh, for the standard library for a majority of, uh, for the most common things, the types were done by the, by the partially by my PI team, partially by community. And those types are stored in the another Git repo called TypeShed. So if I go to GitHub TypeShed, uh, they have types for different different uh, modules. Let's say Python two and three. Let's say I don't know which one. Default one. Let's let's uh, check one now. So. This is what is called stub file. It has an extension PYY, PYI, and it, it's kind of like header in C language. So here you have basically all of the objects, classes, and functions where you don't have any code in their body, but you say the input type and here output type everywhere. So you specify types, you don't have any function body. Basically, it's like C uh, uh, headers in C or C++. Uh, so for all of the, like, for majority of standard library, uh, this uh, types are provided. Uh, now, also, There are some uh, type sheds, some stops provided for third party libraries, not for many of those, but for, the, for some. For example, uh, for data util module, for uh, there is, I think in Python 2, there is cryptography module for module called SIX or Tornado or OpenSSL for very popular uh, third party packages, uh, the types are there. So this is one option. So uh, if you see that you have actually correct types, but it yells at some third party type, you can go ahead and contribute to this, re uh, to this repo. Um, okay, um, what are alternatives? Alternatives is to ship your, uh, your stuff. You either annotate your, your code directly Either, either with Python 2 syntax or with Python 3. Um, and, um, and alternatively, you can also put the stub files like they have here in the same directories. You put this py, uh, PYI files where you, you know, specify all of these types and ship those with your library so that users of your library can benefit from, from static types. As a very last step, if your if the third party developer kind of doesn't care, um, you can disable checks for third party library. So this is what I usually do because it's not it's not very popular yet. Uh, so not every third party library developer is using that. Uh, so I usually use this flag called ignore missing imports. Uh, which actually says, okay, like if I couldn't find the types for third party libraries, then I don't care. Okay. Good. So I think this was very brief. Well, not very brief, but it's almost an hour now. Uh, I think it was good introduction to my pie. Um, well, not, I'm not sure if it was good, but I do hope it, it was useful for you guys. Let me know if you have any other questions. Uh, meanwhile, I am going to start actually introducing types to our project that we are going to work on today, which is not near. Okay.
during um, while I will be annotating the library you will actually see different kind of like tips and tricks because in some places it's actually not that obvious and sometimes you actually have to imply some kind of magic to make your code pass the MyPy type checker uh, we'll see we'll see you later uh, okay if you if during the process you have questions at any point just let me know uh, so what I'm going to do I already have I already forked the Nornir repo uh, to my github account so if I go to my profile and then Nornir I forked uh, no, uh, the official Narnia repo um, and it says I am 22 commits behind so probably it would be a great idea to pull the latest but if you're uh, to git status uh, your branch is up to date no okay. git pull uh, actually no git fetch upstream so if I say yeah so I have my repo set up as origin, my fork, and the, the original repo is set up as upstream. So I can say git fetch upstream. I downloaded the new stuff. And okay, so I can now say git. Uh, well, I can do git, git merge basically. I can do git merge upstream develop git status git log removed unmerged feature from change log why, why is it saying that it's a tracked file Uh, let me double check. I am not expert in Git. I know some workflows, but not all. Okay, yeah, so it seems we are in sync. I'm curious what is this file uh, tests and sort oh the database did is it deleted let me check the original repo so nor near tests plugins inventory data oh okay so it got deleted, inventory data and sort folder got deleted. Okay, so I can delete it here too. Okay, so git log. Okay, good. So yeah, let's, let's start working. So now we are in sync. Uh, I think I can do git push to push to my repo. So that my remote repo is in sync too. I don't think it's really needed, but yeah, it's in, in sync now. Okay, so what is the next step? The next step is to create uh, and I think I already have virtual environment, but since uh, I, I can recreate it. So I can say era minus rf vnf and I will say by pipenv because I'm using pipenv pipenv uh, let me see what the requirements uh, file has
Colorama Payamo, blah blah blah. Okay. So I would need to say pip env Python three sits install install, I guess. Okay, we are creating the virtual environment and we should be installing from the from the uh, requirements file. And you know what? I'm sorry, I will have to redo this again. Uh, the reason why I already have pip file and pip file log, so I have to get rid of those. Okay, okay let's try again. So it should say that it found the file requirements txt. Requirements txt found instead of pip file converting. Uh, so it created the pip file these uh, packages from uh, from the requirements txt this will take a while And now I have to install development requirements. So I would say pip env pip env install minus minus dev minus r requirement dev txt. And if I look on my pip file, now I see in dev packages all of those uh, requirements. There is one more requirement that is uh, extremely useful that I'm going to add in a, in a moment. We have to install the library itself uh, using the pip install minus e dot. Uh, you can do the same thing using pip and as well. So to install the actual module in our virtual environment. So p file is uh, is good to go. Now we say pip env uh, install minus minus dev minus e dot. Successfully installed Nornir. Okay, and it should be added to our dev packages. Here there is the section editable true path. Dot. <clears throat> yeah, creating log file is actually t takes a while. Okay, so our environment is now ready. Uh, so we have uh, we have our main dependencies and packages. We have our development stuff, which is pytest, pytest cuff, uh, pylama. I haven't used pylama before. I have no idea what is doing the requests. Mock talks black, and the, our package itself. Okay. I think if you do now pip env, uh, you know what, let me do git status first. Oh, okay, requirements.dev. Let me bring the minus r requirements back. Okay, git says I'm fine. So now I can say pip env run python. And I can say import normal basically. 
Oh, it works. Perfect. There are a couple of things, other things that I like to install during the debugging. Uh, well, we will have to install them anyway. Okay, let's first create a new branch called um, git branch, no, git checkout minus b uh, mypy. Git status. Okay, I'm on the new branch. So, a couple things that I, we will need. Well, first of all, is mypy itself. Plus, we will need uh, mypy extensions, but I don't remember how the library is called. Uh, my pie extensions. Either mypy minus extensions or oh typing typing extensions. Pip install minus u typing typing exceptions. Extensions exceptions. <laughs> okay, so you will need that. I uh, need typing extensions plus i also like to have ipython in the virtual environment plus i use ipdb as debugger um we'll install that Ooh. I'm thinking if you need something else as well. Junji 1991, thank you very much for subscription. Very much appreciated, man. Okay, good. So I think we should be able to say pip and from mypy. Uh, and we have to specify the uh, the folder Narnir. So we run uh, mypy on Narnir. And actually you already see that it, uh, it it's yelling at on some of our stuff that we have. So let's see what it's yelling about. So no library stop for Paramico. Cannot find module named NetMiko. Cannot find module named Napalm. So those are third party keepers. Cannot find module config parser. Name CP is already defined. Uh, you could check this. So this seems like a legit error. Cannot find module named NetMiko. Okay, again, third party library, third party library, third party library. Cannot find module name SCP. Cannot find module name copyright. Perhaps setting my pi pass or using ignore missing imports. Flag would help. Yeah, so I usually, I usually set the ignore uh, missing imports. Let me bring it up. 
So setup CFG will get new section MyPy. I'm thinking if I should use my usual setup of CFG. Strict optional. So the the probably the most problematic one is check untyped devs. Uh, so if you have this as true, basically you will have so many, uh, so many warnings. Let let me try. So we will ignore missing imports. So for like third party libraries, uh, but for other stuff like this will cause so many errors, but we'll see. Okay, so let's run MyPy again. Nice. Actually, it's not that bad. It's really what, like... In my current programs, I usually have more problems. <laughs> so, it's actually not that bad. Um, well, actually... Once we start introducing types to functions, uh, then it's going to be quite a mess. Um, so I was asked by David to start with plugins. So this is what we are going to do. Uh, so plugins, let's see on the first error that it's yelling at us. Plugins inventory Ansible. Uh, Ansible.py, oh no, it's, incorrect folder so it's nor near uh plugins inventory ansible type in word ansible uh let me Changes I typo inspections typo spelling yes don't tell me what is wrong okay module config parser is not found interesting so it seems like in Python two and three is called differently. Common case variable imported as lower case. This time PyCharm uh, uh, error, whatever. And let's also, since we are, we will be using Python 3.6, only we will also will convert this to new new style classes which do not inherit from object okay usually annotating the library that you didn't write is actually not that simple um for example you see like i'm looking right now on this code right and it says self host file uh self hosts file is equal to hosts file so what is the type of the host file is it a string uh is that a, a file object itself most likely most likely it seems like a, it's a string but we would need to go where uh we would need to find we'll probably will try to run tests If there, if there are some tests for Ansible. Uh, oh, okay, this one. So let's see. From Nornier plugins inventory Ansible. 
ansible.parse hosts file ospas join okay ospas join uh, returns just a string uh, so if I do ipython uh, actually it's just ppn from ipython and I say uh, uh, import ospas uh, ospas join it joins two pass names and it should return it returns the string okay there is also another another trick that we were doing while we were annotating a mypy which was this uh, so you don't know like what is a what is the type so we were doing this we were setting the breakpoint we were running our test so if I run now uh, pytest so pipenv run pytest It should crash on test uh, Ansible and it goes to your debugger where you can just say uh, either from from typing import review type Com I forgot the function name um, Is it from? Oh, it's not real function. Is it from my pie extensions? Whatever uh, we can just say type of self hosts file. So I was using this uh, quite but yeah. So reveal types is actually not reveal type is uh, like a shortcut. It's for different purposes. You are not supposed to run this function actually. Uh, you use this in your code and then only mypy reacts on it. Uh, so. Let me actually try seeing if it will be able to infer this type. I don't think it will be able to do this. I still don't remember the proper... You can use a real type expression to ask my pi to display the infer static type of an expression. This can be useful and I don't quite understand how my pi handles a particular piece of code. from typing oh okay you don't even have to import it right so you just say this you just say this and and you run my pi but I don't think it will be able to tell me what is the uh, And run my pi. Uh, no near. So this should be uh, Ansible plugins Ansible 
reveal type is any. Okay, so in this case it doesn't understand the type yet, which makes sense. Okay, so this will be type string. We already saw it with debugger. Uh, OS pass dear name. Well, we don't have to specify types here. We have to specify types for mutable object though. Okay, init returns none. Uh, okay. The sparse group also, I see that there is no return statement, so it returns none. This returns none. Parse hosts, uh, this is also returns none. Soft groups, soft groups also returns none. Uh, this one though is. It's returning something else. Um, YAML lot, I think it returns dictionary. Python. So uh, I think it returns dictionary, but I don't remember. Uh, import YAML YAML. And then Um, yeah, this open sandbox test YAML SF B is equal to YAML load F. Okay, and type of B is a dictionary. No, it's commented map. Oh wow, B, commented map. Um, is instance B ticked? Um, I don't think it's ticked. Oh, it's actually ticked. Is instance B ticked? Okay, so this B object, even though it's commented map, it's subclass of dictionary. So, okay. Okay, so this return type is going to be uh, dict uh, str any. So this is parsing of the Ansible inventory and Ansible inventory can be, can contain lists, dictionaries and blah, 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 and so on. So the only thing we know about the data that we are getting is, uh, is that it's dictionary with string keys. Uh, okay, so I have to add here from from typing import uh, dict any okay so dict str any okay this one is boolean you still have to you will have to go through every one of those read verse file self object
This one I'm not sure yet. Okay, let's go from here, from the tests. So it all starts with ansible dot parse, and this is a string. So we end up here ansible dot parse. We end up here. We will this parse function takes uh, str. Then we select a parser, it's either INI parser or YAML parser, and then parser.parse, and we return tuple of parser.hosts and parser.groups. So we return these two objects. So now I have to figure out what those are. Well, I can do this. I can say import debugger here and then Import IP GP ID GP set trace. I'm trying to understand what are those. I guess those are lists of hosts or lists of groups.
and I also had IPGB somewhere else. Oh, I already deleted it. Okay, so pipan from PyTest. I'm looking if I can just say plugins. I I don't know the correct arguments for PyTest. Okay, incorrect syntax in online one one six eight. Okay. Let's do for now any. We also have to import double. So now I can say type of hosts uh, oh, Okay, so this is just a dictionary. I'm going to save this to like one of my scratch files And uh, we have hosts and we have groups. Most likely we will have to introduce the uh, a th uh, thing called typed dict so what type dict can do for you it can enforce different keys in the dictionary so you can say your dictionary is supposed to have a groups key for example or nor near host or nor near SSH port whatever but in this case it also has this variables called like my var Yes, yes, this will not be possible. So, for me, this is a string and type any. Okay. So, this will be dict str any. Uh, what about groups? Groups are str. Actually, you know what? I'm incorrect there. Uh, I'm of course incorrect. So this is going to be dict str any. So key is a host. Every host is dictionary itself, like this. Okay, nor near host, nor near SSH port, groups, my var, whatever. Those are variables. Let me see if there are any comments in the chat. Uh, there are a couple questions. Sorry that I didn't reply earlier. You have time today. Can you show us a demo like how to write a plugin to Nornir and then from there it can test out my Pi against Nornir as well? Uh, no, probably not today. Um, yeah, today I'm going to focus only on my Pi. Uh, Ali Intrix, hi there. How are you doing? Okay, the groups, uh, this is a string 
this is a key it may have key code groups or anything else okay so then this type is the same basically you say that groups is of the same type now this kind of bothers me it says unresolved attribute reference lot host file for class ansible parser which is not here the only way it would be here is if well no it does, doesn't exist here so what hosts file unresolved attribute reference load host file for class ansible ah okay so i would do this since this is really like incorrect construct but then we are doing inheritance so then it's supposed to work so i would do this i will say this is none and uh, this array is not implemented error okay parse group group data parent none use our debugger to understand the group and data so I'm removing my debugger here um, let me also find something um, write test and PTB write test S turn off capture output okay okay so we need to understand uh, what is group and what is data so type of now it's just print group p p data aha uh -huh. i'm interested if this children is always there Yeah, it actually may be there in data. Okay, so group, this is str. Data, uh, so parent is bool. Data is definitely dictionary, but I'm not yet sure which kind of dictionary. So this is dict of dict any, but this has data, 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 data get hosts and data get children. Okay, 
so let me try um, so this is where we will need to use typing extensions from typing extensions import type dict type dict type dict okay so then um, group group data dict is equal to typed dict and I have to go look for the syntax because I don't remember uh, typed dict from my extensions import Why this doesn't work there? Um, let me see. Yeah, I installed the correct one. It should be my pie extensions, not typing extensions. Let me see if there is anything in the chat. No, chat is uh, quiet today. We'll have to specify this type as well, self-groups.group. I'm not sure why I started this Ansible, considering that it's it's not doesn't always work. I should have started with uh, should have started with actually something like the tasks or functions. Ah, that's all right. Okay. From my pie extensions import type ticked okay and then from my pie extensions import type ticked typed ticked um, movie Why this worked? Oh, okay, because of the syntax error. Okay, so we print our data it contains children and then it can be anything uh, and besides children it also may have a wars as well okay so children and wars this will be dict of 
uh, str dict str any and virus is going to be virus is going to be well here we don't have virus Here we have hosts. Group hosts. non hosts okay children which is a dictionary virus which is a dictionary with anything yeah this looks good to me data empty empty this is interesting This looks good to me. So this is group data dict. So this is fine. You don't need to annotate anything here. Expected type optional bull got str instead. Interesting. Parent. Oh, of course it's not a bull. Uh, it's optional. Parent. It's optional string. Okay. So optional, by the way, is ba basically says it's either this type or it's none. So it's uh, the shortcut. So optional. Okay. This looks good. This looks good. Hosts, again, I don't remember. For hosts, data in hosts items. I would need to set up another breakpoint. Uh, here. I guess host is a string. Parent, I don't know. I guess parent is a group name or something.
Are you going to introduce my pie to the whole Narnia project? Yes, probably not today, but yes. Yes, I was gonna ask why I started from Ansible. I don't know, this was my mistake. Considering that the Ansible is not working 100% yet, this was just a bad idea. But that's alright. Quentin, thank you very much for subscription. Nice seeing you on the stream, my fellow streamer. So host pp host pp data ah damn it here data is an empty uh, empty dictionary so For host data, okay, so yeah, I, I it seems I understand now. Uh, for hosts data, actually, we will be able to infer types for data because it's part of this which we will infer from this. So this actually should be fine self add host actually all this stuff is fine okay so this is going to be dictionary parent i always forget about parent uh parent yeah it's just a string so parent is always going to be optional str let's fix this while we are here is host pull through dict str any Path is going to be string. What about element? I don't even see element. Oh, it's right here. It's also going to be a string. Okay. This is good. This kind of bothers me a lot. I'm not sure what object that is and how this function is called. Uh, let me see map nor near wires. Map Nornier wars self groups dot group.
type object is dict map nonlinear wires okay this makes sense so basically this is just uh, you know what we have to we can create like an alias wires dict which is going to be dict str of any and then it will be much easier in the code to read this that it's a wires dict like here for example This one says element, an element dict. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. So okay, this is str. This function returns none. Element dict. What is that? Defaults. It seems like group vars. No, it's actual group dict. It's group dict which has default key. Ah, uh, yes, PyCharm is the best idea for Python out there. Um, element dict. You know what? Let me check the file if i if i look on the file it will be so much easier uh, so inventory uh, ansible ansible parser let's do ini expected let's do source no let's actually have expected full example.com and contain groups element ticked contain groups what about defaults Tests plugin inventory test ansible test inventory ini. Okay, so test ansible ini source.
Oh, default, default is right here. So, okay, expected. So it means the simple inventory that is expected by... I always forget, we have groups. We have var variables, we have groups in this file. I'm willing to just put, put any and then don't care anymore. Element dict for example.com Okay, so this one is right here, which is just a bunch of variables. Uh, element ticked here is for example.com and contain groups. Why well, doesn't make sense to me? For example.com in contains groups. Well, so technically. This is just anything. has host and items for the hosts element dict okay so dict str virus dict okay Okay, we annotated the Ansible parser class. Uh, Dmitry, did you ever get get a chance to take some time off and relax? I did not. I'm I'm going home tomorrow, so I'm going to have two weeks of vacation. But I'm not sure I'm going to just relax. I will get bored. Um, okay, so let's run my pie. Ah, Nornir. And I'm looking forward to the Ansible. Name CP is already defined by import. So I haven't seen the server before at all. Uh, so it, it complains about this. Uh, let me actually Google this. Most likely, I will have to type. I will have to disable type checking here, since um, okay, this is an error that we have. The current workaround is typing now.
it's still open okay so while it is open Ansible line 58 so by the way you already see that this one uh, Ansible type uh, since we already annotated it it actually we are starting to get some uh, some benefit uh, of of the type checking so now it actually looks on these types and can infer types for your code um so it's yelling at us line 58 this data get children items okay interesting why it's yelling at us argument two to parse group of ansible parser has incompatible type dict str any expected group data dict this doesn't make a lot of sense to me though data get children Okay, so total false flag. Oh, actually, I put it in the wrong place. Um, total false flag basically saying not every key. Well, basically, if there is no key like this, it's fine. Uh, are you going to somewhere doing vacation? I'm going home to my hometown. Um, but I'm still for two weeks but then i'm planning to also go somewhere where i don't know nowhere after i come back we'll see i actually want to spend one week somewhere completely without technology <laughs> we'll see how it, how it will work out for me i don't understand this group data dict I have it here I'm referring to it now I am saying data get children which is dict and it should be fine but then it yells at me saying nope this is not correct oh I see now why this function is recursive so we actually go ahead and do the same stuff interesting I do not know if I can do this with my pi like recursive dict I think we'll have to fall back to type like any any So yeah, if you think about this, we are getting children and then and then applying the same function over again. Uh, let me see if I can say type dict recursion. Do you play any games? I, well, not really right now, but 
when I really can't do any work anymore I play something on PlayStation so the latest game that I finished was Battlefield 1 so the single player and I think the latest one that I just downloaded and started was Game of Thrones from Telltale but I didn't go farther. <sighs> Damn, this is confusing. Let's look on Ansible file, maybe it will be easier to understand. Yeah, when you didn't write the code, it's actually pretty hard to just go ahead and put types everywhere but it's kind of fun as well i think well i'm advocating for quote quality so okay so i need to say group wars actually no uh That's cool, but also give yourself a break. Okay, I I need to think this through. I don't understand what is going on. So there are f there can be a following keys in the data wars, hosts or children. Wars is a verdict, so wars is a verdict, so it can be anything. Children I don't remember. Um I think I need to check the uh, Yama one. Yeah, something like this. So children has another groups. Okay, so children is basically the same dict all over again. And then but I don't see here groups though. Oh hosts, hold on hosts and what about hosts so hosts are string yeah I have to write this down so we have group wars which is basically wars dict okay? which is uh, dict of str any you can have any format of the variables you have children Children, which is essentially dictionary, the same that we are describing. Um, and we have hosts. What is hosts? Hosts is uh, str of dict of str. Where is, where is it? Really? 
Okay, I think it makes sense now to me. Let's try this. Uh, I do not know if it supports recursive ones. So this one is var sticked. Hosts is str var sticked. But this one is actually group data dict. This should this kind of make sense, but let's see if my pie is happy now. Wow. No, it's internal error. Please report the bug. <laughs> no. I broke my pie. Let me see. It's closed. My pie crashes with the recursion. Okay. Ideally, I would want to open the bug for this. Nice. Okay. Okay, yeah, I know how to work around this, uh, I guess. So here I have to say cast. So cast is basically you are lying to my pi bounty type. Which is all right. So basically, I'm saying I have to import cast function. Ah, uh, cast. Basically, you're saying, well, whatever is the type is, I am lying to you and saying that this is group data dict. Group data dict. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Let's see if it fixes the error. Pretty sure it will fix the error. Uh, so, yeah, we got rid of error here. Uh, to do this also, uh, to do open my playback. Okay, I think we are going to stream for like another, another, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes. No, I don't have any bot, so, so uh, uptime will not work. Uh, or it works all the time, I don't know. I don't, I'm not power user of Twitch. Uh, okay, so. Value of type known is not indexable. Uh 
Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. We have to find where we redefine this data. I don't remember if we always start with group all enunciable. In YAML format, it always starts with all. Just here. Um, in INI parser, we create all. Okay. Well, we don't necessarily need to. Well, I, I think we can create create it anyway. Um, Ansible. I think this is actually group data ticked. This is what it is. You can have variable, you can have group all, you can have children, you can have hosts under the group all or variables. Children, hosts, variables. What a mess. Um, okay. So original data is going to be optional. Ansible was sticked. Then Here we'll have to cast this type. And then self original data is supposed to be fine. Let's see. D well, it depends. If we are referencing it somewhere, we may need to need to type annotation for data. Connections line sixty three. Line sixty three. 
and 65 oh oh it's wrong file value of type optional ansible host ticked is not indexable on line 65 okay so here is for example we already found some bug so since we are defining here that original data is none it's not necessarily always none so we have to go ahead and actually do a check if self original data is not none then we go ahead and do this because it can be a non type so we just you know found some one random bug um, okay now line 133 Okay, result normalized content. Hmm. So this file is actually almost annotated uh, by the way this one tuple in is obviously incorrect it should be tuple of dict wires dict uh, let's also do this hosts uh, wires dict is this hosts wires dict This one self groups. I think it's actually group tick data, but no, whatever. I think we'll leave it like this. So we return here hosts were ticked, and we return this one. Two values. Okay. I do not know how to annotate keyword arguments yet.
Right now I will put a placeholder any because I have no clue which one are uh, are accepted by inventory. Can go ahead and check, but. By the way, this is a good example. Uh, remember, I told you it's very beginning that uh, if you put like types here in doc strings, they quickly become outdated. So we can actually see it here. There is new argument called Nornir uh, here, but it's not uh, described in the doc string at all, right? So re relying on the doc string is really not a great idea. Um, while you can enforce type checking. Okay, so there is hosts, groups, transform function in Nornir object. Uh, let me go back to Ansible. Host towards group keyword arguments is. Yeah, I will just put any. I will just put any here. So this one is fine. This one seems to be fine. Now, there are a couple of places. This function and the result and this function and the result. Uh, and that's pretty much it for this function. Uh, yeah, so only like a couple of places. Uh, so yeah. Basically, this INI parser you have to fix, and then we'll be good to go. So, uh, I am going to do this IPDB. And let's run tests plugins uh, inventory okay so result this seems like just twice normalized content um, content Content is string. Oh well, let me find where we are invoking this self normalize content data. Normalize content for option in split. Okay, so this is a string. <sighs> Damn it. Um, content split. We just split splitting by lines. Uh, then for every line, we are going to find the one with the equal sign. So this is just i i i parser. Um, let's see. So tests uh, i i source.
Yeah, so he here it is. We have a sections and we have some variables. We are splitting by... Um, actually, I forgot. Let me try. <clears throat> Text is equal to 1, 2, 3, space 4, 5, 6, backslash n, 1, 2, 3. And text split. Okay, so it splits by white spaces. So for every white space, we are going to separate those. We'll find the sections where we have uh, equal sign. So for every object where we have an equal sign, then we are trying to convert to uh, value to int if possible. If not, it's okay, then we are assigning this to result and returning result. Ah, uh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so the result here is going to be dict. We have string, well, actually it's wars dict, actually. Uh, it's just wars dict. This is what you're going to have as part of this normalize content function and content itself if not content return result a uh, content itself is just a string okay then there is one function left which is just normalize everything this one will be trickier uh, This will be the last thing that we are going to do today, since I still need to pack for for my trip tomorrow. So let's run this. Well, obviously, we'll also run my pie to check if uh, if it complains or it's fine. Uh, okay, so let's print result. Oh wow result default observers For me, it's like string and group data dict. String group data dict. This will be result. Uh, normalize data. Okay, so dictionary string groups data dict. What about the data itself? Data is just a string, perfect. Escape pot is equal to two. Actually, no, it's, it can be data. Uh, oh, I see now why. This data portion is redefined here inside.
So oh, this this is bothering me very much. to put a breakpoint here to see what is the data okay data Config parser object. What is going on? Uh, is instance data dict false? Oh wow! Data items items view. Data. Okay, so this is config parser object. So this uh, data is going to be cp config parser. Uh, and it seems we are done. There is one place where I'm, what which is bothering me is this, where I change this to different thing. Also, I, I don't understand why we are using items everywhere. We can say Oh, okay Because it's not a dictionary It has only method the items I guess um, Let's try print I don't know, this seems to work fine. So actually I will put it back. Okay. Let's run PyTest now. Ideally it should not fail, so our stuff should not break everything which we did so
captured local reading wire file where file doesn't exist For children in children data in da data get items set object has no attribute items well I didn't change code here so what did I do <laughs> Okay, I guess I guess we'll have to figure out next time. Um, so yeah, I'm. I need a break. And to do packing for tomorrow for my trip tomorrow. So I think uh, I think we will stop t uh, right now. Or maybe let's see. It actually says data set. Yeah, we need to figure it out later. Uh, but I will still try to run my pie to see what kind of report it uh, gives us for the Nornir plugins. Yeah, so you see it's quite a bunch of works. That's why you usually want to like enable it for like one file at a time or something so we didn't get rid of all errors here but there are some problems here uh, so for example lines 135 okay i would have to put result uh here which we didn't do and this is just worse dict by the way uh, There are a couple of other places here I have no idea. Oh, actually, I can put it here. Call to type function in it in type content. Okay, so we can't fix this. This basically refers to so you are trying to call a function in another module, uh, but, uh, but, Hold on, type uh, yeah. So, but that function is not annotated, so you can't fix this right now. Uh, the, we fix this in compatible types and assignment on line one forty three. This one seems interesting. Uh, yeah. So, okay, this kind of makes sense because we are redefining the variable. So you would say value here and then you would say else uh, value is equal to V and then you can assign value so we fix that But this one in compatible times in assignment 196, this will be much harder to fix though. 196 in except CP error. Expression has type YAML parser, variable has type. Ah, uh, yeah. This will, we'll need to do this. Any parser or YAML parser will infer from Ansible parser. Local variable on. Okay. So I think this will fix a uh, majority of Ansible module errors. Ah uh, no, it 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 made it worse. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Um, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. 
compatible times in assignments line 147 um Argument one has incompatible type optional any on line of one sixty one. Yes, this 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 function is completely broken. It has to to do. Type D key must be string literal expanded one of children. On line 161, on this line where we are signing results, uh, on this line and on this line, yeah, I have some idea, but it should be further investigated. And this one I do not know yet. This one we already discussed that we actually can't fi can't fix right now, since we are referring to to another context uh, there is probably one additional part that I would like to do I would like to limit right now the mypy only to inventory uh, inventory folder so let's try doing that um, mypy selector this probably is something that I should have done it's very beginning so you would need to do I don't remember how it's done. GitHub com third bot. I will steal that. Um, set up CVG. Guess I will need to find my contribution here. <laughs> Uh, commits issues files changed my by any yeah well I guess we'll need to do something like this my pie my pie minus acme this will be nowhere near um nor near plugins nor near plugins basically and then uh my pi my pi nor near uh, is ignore errors i think this will work uh yeah true Yeah, we can even further. We see that right now it basically yells at us about plugins only. We can even filter it down and say inventory uh, for now. OK, 
okay so for example you could just go ahead and fix uh, fix these errors and then add this to the CI CD uh, yeah. so yeah that was it I think I'm done for today um, let me see if there are any questions I don't think there were any uh, I hope you guys learned something new about Python and optional type checking. We started doing work for existing open source project. Most likely it was the part when I was starting doing that. It was extremely boring, uh, but unfortunately not every open source work is extremely exciting. So this is just something that you, know, you just have to do as a developer if you want to improve your code quality. So. Uh, if you haven't checked MyPy and optional uh, and type checking in Python, I strongly encourage you at least to check it out to understand if this is something that you want to do for your code base or not. I personally decided that I'm going to do it for all of my projects now. Um, and yeah, um, that's pretty much it for today. Again, the next stream is going to be two weeks from now on Sunday. There will be no stream next week. Uh, thank you very much guys for sticking with me today and I wish you a great Sunday uh, and see you two weeks from now. Thank you. Bye everyone.